Hi, I'm Quinn, Early Literacy Coordinator with Newfoundland and Labrador Public Libraries. Today, I'm at the Kindale Public Library here in Stephenville to share with you a draw and tell story. Today's story is called Mrs. McGregor's Salad, and it's written by Adele Jeanette. So let's get started with our story. Our story starts with Mrs. McGregor. Now, Mrs. McGregor was sitting out on her patio enjoying a lovely spring day. She was noticing all of the signs and sounds of spring. Can you think of some signs and sounds of spring? Things that you would hear or see as we transition out of all of these winter months and into our spring and then eventually summer? Some things you might hear would be the birds singing or chirping. We might see that green grass start to pop up. We might even smell the smell of grass or the smell of earth. We might see a few insects buzzing about. There's lots of signs and sounds of spring and Mrs. McGregor was sitting out and enjoying all of them. But she started to get a little bit hungry. So she popped into the house and decided that she would make a salad. She took out the largest salad bowl that she could find and went in the hunt in her fridge for a few ingredients. Now her favorite salad ingredient is carrots. Do you have something that you love to put in a salad? Maybe an onion or a cucumber or a tomato? I think my favorite's the tomato, but Mrs. McGregor's favorite was carrots. So she went to her fridge and started to root around looking for those carrots. She knew she had a few. She looked and looked, but she didn't find carrots, but she did find two big radishes. Now, I don't know if you've ever had a radish before, but they can be a little bit spicy, I find. They're one of my favorites as well. So she took her two radishes and she put them in her salad. She went back to the fridge, still looking for those carrots. And again, she didn't find her carrots, but she did find two olives. Now, these were green olives that had the little red bit in them. I think they're called pimento olives. Now, I don't know about you, but olives are not my favorite, but it might be something you would enjoy. And Mrs. McGregor definitely enjoyed olives. So with her radishes and her olives in her salad, she went hunting for even more ingredients, things to add. She found a small triangular piece of cheese and it was cheddar, her favorite. So she put that right into her salad. Continuing on the hunt, she found a red bell pepper nice and sweet. This is one of my favorites. And she added a piece of that red bell pepper into her salad. Now her salad was really coming along, but she felt like it was still missing something. You know what it was missing? It was missing those delicious carrots. She knew she had them somewhere. So she started pulling things out of her fridge in search of these carrots but she still couldn't find the carrots. She did find a few stalks of celery and she added the celery to her salad. Now, she felt a little bit confused because she had all of these salad ingredients and she knew she had carrots, but she just could not find them. So she thought, maybe I left them out. Maybe I didn't put them in the fridge. You know, sometimes that happens when you've got a ton of groceries and you come in or if you're helping uh, your caregiver, your grown up put away groceries, sometimes there's a few items that get missed. So Mrs. McGregor went over to her living room and she walked all around her living room in search for those carrots. And you know what she found sitting in the middle of the living room? One of her big carrots. And she thought, hmm, that's funny. You know, sometimes I forget to put, a gro put groceries away, but a carrot in the middle of the living room and only one? 
I know I have at least two carrots. So she thought that was kind of strange. She went over to the dining room and she took a look in there. She walked all the way around her dining room in search for that second carrot. And lo and behold, do you know what she found? She found another carrot. Now, Mrs. McGregor thought, this is very strange. Why are my carrots in my dining room and my living room? So she went into the hallway, the space in between her dining and living room, and she saw a white little fluffy puffball of a tail poking out un from underneath her hutch. And so she bent down and she looked underneath her hutch and she found the culprit. She found who was stealing her carrots. And do you know who it was? It was a fuzzy white little bunny. Well, I hope you enjoyed our Lit Fit today and I hope you enjoyed the story all about Mrs. McGregor Salad and her little bunny friend. I have a few books that are spring or bunny or Easter inspired for you to take a look at. <laughs> if you're interested, please come visit us at the library and look for all sorts of other stories. Before we go today, I wanted to share with you a way that you can make your very own bunny puppet. So we drew a bunny and you might be able to draw along if you want to listen to this story again, but you could also create a bunny puppet using a napkin or scarf that you have hanging around the house. To start, all you need to do is take your fingers and you're going to spread them wide to begin with. And then you're going to take your pinky finger and your ring finger and put those together and then keep space between your middle finger, your pointer finger, and then those two fingers that you've got together. Let's take our cloth and we're going to just drape it over our fingers and our hand and even our arm. And we want our two corners to be hanging along the bottom. Let's take one corner and we're going to put it in between our pointer finger and our middle finger. And then we're going to slide it up as we squeeze those two fingers together. And what does that look like? Does it look like a little ear? Let's do it on the other side. So we're going to take our other corner and this time we're going to go between our middle finger and then our ring finger and our pinky finger. So we'll take that corner and then we'll squeeze and slide it all the way up and then you can kind of tuck it a little bit. You'll take this bottom bit and swoop it around and there you have your very own bunny puppet and you can wiggle his little nose by wiggling the middle finger. Well, there you go. I hope you're able to share lots of stories and maybe even make a little bunny drawing or a bunny puppet all on your own. Until next time.